I'd like to go to the Bible because your whole, you know, front is that, you know, you're going to the Bible, you're doing this conservative stuff. Prostitutes were popular in the Bible. I mean, I went and I took a look and I, I'm like, what in the world's going on here? So I went and, and I kind of took a gather at it. Sorry, just, did you say prostitutes were popular in the Bible? Yeah, they, yeah, they're mentioned. They're mentioned on on multiple fronts. So yeah, I, I'll get into it. But when you say so, popular, what do you mean by that? I, I'll go. I'll go right into these verses for you. But just to let you know, like I am very spiritually agnostic. So and I've and I've done a lot of world religion classes as electives. So to even bring the Bible in, I know you will. That's what your base wants, you know. But you actually brought the Bible in. So. Well, oh, I, oh, I'm going to bring it in. But um, <laughs> oh, just, I, for me, just, just I need a logical. I just need a logical barometer to go off of a common sense logical barometer to go off of when we're discussing um, yay or nay on on sex work. But like to make to make my point, like in Chronicles, so King David had like eight wives. Okay, right, and concubines are sex workers, and he had so many sex workers that he couldn't even keep count. So his body count was apparently way higher than mine, and God condoned it. And then um, King Solomon, he married his own daughter, which God condoned. He had seven hundred wives. He had three hundred sex workers, all of which God condoned. So. And then we know, you know, with the history of the courtesan and um, that they were at the top of the food chain back then, whereas the, the wives were like toddlerized, couldn't own property, and they were at home being, you know, being made to feel like children. But then we, if you go to Deuteron Deuteronomy 22, 28 through 29, God instructing a rapist to marry his victim, and they're not even role playing. Uh, Genesis 19, 16, Lot's wife got turned into a pillar of salt, okay? Genesis, um, just in, in general, Adam and Eve, they have two males. So we're apparently all descendants from incest, apparently. And then Adam and Eve raised a murderer as the first humans on earth. You know, it's like, okay, well, that's bad luck. So I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater on all of religious messaging. I think you can take some nice stuff from all of them. And, and I worked with a close-knit group of uh, Mormons. There's a lot of Mormons that occupy the Boise area. Um, it, when I was doing white collar work and, you know, I love them to death, their sense of family, um, and unification. They are fantastic people. But some of the things that, they, that they've got going on in their Bible, I'm just like, goodness gracious, but there's things that they believe that I think is good. <laughs> I just, I need something common yeah. sense. Like if uh, I'm, if I'm spiritually, <laughs> if I'm very spiritual and agnostic, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, I, okay. So I'm going to just back us up because I, I don't want the chats and the comments to be um, mocking you because I think that you've been oh about that's the fact fine uh, they're the fact gonna mock me no matter what agnostic you obviously are not well read in the Bible you probably did a Google search just for mentions of prostitution and mentions of concubines right because you thought that I was gonna throw out some Christian rhetoric at you um, I would very much be open to um, suggesting that you enter an actual Bible study. Uh, to to understand the things that you're <laughs> bringing up sort of sporadically here. Um, but suffice it to say that the Bible's messaging um, and God's messaging is not that prostitutes are good and that it's good to have concubine relationships. Didn't he love Mary Magdalene? Can yes. you tell me the story of yes. that? Yeah, and, and by the way, it was a, here's a wonderful series if you'd rather stay um, cultural on these things. If you watch The, Cho the Chosen, um, he, you know, he heals her. And, and that we, we, you understand that Jesus was a healer. Um, mm -hmm. And I would love for you to be healed in your assessments of um, what it means to be a sex worker, because I do think that you, you do need Christ. And that's, I told you before we started this episode, um, before we started this conversation rather, that I did have a former sex worker who did the exact opposite as you. Um, you know, she was a porn star, she was on Pornhub, and then she found Jesus Christ and she started studying the Bible. I watched it. She was supposedly yeah, on, a, was on a plane and God started yeah. talking to her. And, and I think that that could happen, could happen for you as well. And so, yes, there are mentions of prostitutes in the Bible. Yes, God has healed prostitutes and there is no reason ever that any real Christian should ever say to you that your life is over and that you can't transform and that you can't similarly be healed by God's word. And I, and I want that for you in the same way that I wanted that for the girl that I was sitting across for um, meaningfully. But um, I was definitely not going to try to throw you off and have a theological debate with you about the things that you're doing because as you said, you know, you haven't presented yourself as a Christian. So I don't find 
you to be living hypocritically and right. any means. And I don't Thank think that you. that would have been fair. Um, I did with the girl who said she was wearing the cross and said that she was raised a Catholic. She knew what she was saying, mm -hmm. and she obviously knew what she was trying that she was trying to be. As I said before, perverse, and she was trying to be provocative mm -hmm. um, by taking a shot and saying that the cross is just a cute thing. So she got a little bit more of my ire. Yeah, um, that the other people didn't. I can so. see that. But um, to be honest, I think the aliens would be able to make more sense of it all. <laughs> so I'm on wait and watch. I'm on wait and watch. And as, as uh, more information unfolds throughout the years, I'll make better sense of life. Yeah. And I'm comfortable being there. But I I don't, I really, I'm not since you, scared. Since you brought up scripture there. and I wasn't going to bring up scripture, like I, I do want to just reiterate to you that Nobody is perfect. I've had a very troubled life. You know, my life was not easy for me. I could have ended up maybe like you, you know, you never know. But I was in a way saved before I was saved because I had my grandparents who were devout Christians and who required that we do a Bible study every morning before we went to school. And I think that those things in many ways served as seeds that later grew in my adult life. And I hope that since you're expressing even an interest, if you even just Googled passages about prostitution, that you won't stop there. Um, and that you try, just try Bible study, you know, see if it, see what you learn from it. Have someone sit down from you, start from Genesis, jump in, jump into Exodus, go into Deuteronomy and really understand the, the true context of the things that you're pulling up. Um, but again, I wasn't gonna present that to you as a challenge, so I think that that would not have been fair. Hey guys, if you like this video, you are definitely going to like the full episode even better. You can find it by clicking right here.